Thanks, Anne, and great to see you. Hi, everyone. My name's Tim. Let me start by acknowledging I'm here on Wurundjeri land and let me pay my respect to elders past and present and acknowledge that this is stolen land and resistance against colonisation is ongoing. Today, I'm going to talk about data governance. It's going to be a bit of a roller coaster, so our seatbelt's on. Five minutes is not a lot of time, and I have not had enough coffee today, but let's get started. So data is really important. We have a lot of data in a lot of spaces. The things that I'm interested in are healthcare and urban spaces, so I'm going to use those as examples. A lot of the data we have, though, is held in silos or these kind of bubbles, and they're held in silos for a lot of reasons, and it's really hard to get the data out of silos for citizen scientists to use or for anyone to make any real benefit of. However, I think with these silos, especially in health and urban design, we tend to forget that the citizens have a big role to play in breaking down these silos for two reasons. One is that they actually understand the context of data, like they understand where the data came from and their lived experience of that data. And the other thing is that citizens actually move between these silos more than anyone in the silos themselves. Now, I've got two little case studies of where this is working, kind of. Um, the first is Patients Like Me, which is an online web platform where citizens can upload their health data and Patients Like Me provides tools for them to make sense of that data and to use that data for research, some ethical and legal challenges there, but that's another talk, or to bring that data back into the healthcare system. The other really great example is Open Humans, which allows members, which can really be anyone, to create their own projects and contribute their data to different projects. So the two things that this raises for me, which I think is interesting, on the patients like me side, it raises the use of giving people tools to make use of their data. And on the Open Human side, it gives people the choice of what their data is being used for, which I think sometimes get lost in the conversation around data, privacy, ethics. It's not just about collection, it's about use. What is a good use of data? Currently in Australia and in the world, we have this very laissez-faire model of data governance. It's all very transactional. And we had a really wonderful Twitter discussion, many of the people here uh, over the last few days about this transactional model of citizen science, of data governance, where we take something, we maybe give a service back, but it's the value of that's very, not very transparent. So what I'm interested in in my research in my PhD and in my research fellow role is what's a better model of data governance for research, for citizen science, and just for society in general. Now, there's lots of different models of data governance out there. Um, I've like too many to mention. I've listed a few on the screen, but the ones I'm interested in is the data trust model of data governance. Now, the data trust model has a bit of a bad name to it because Google kind of co-opted it in their Toronto Smart Cities project. Um, so maybe we'll come up with a new name which doesn't have that baggage. But the data trust model at its simplest is having an independent body which manages data, the use and access of data. So let's use the example of Melbourne. Melbourne collects a lot of data through different sensors um, and they do use an open data model. I have a lot to say on open data, but not enough time to talk about it. But we could imagine that there could be a data trust where the Melbourne, city of Melbourne gives their data to the data trust. City of Melbourne can still use it for whatever they want to improve the city. But that data trust will then have a number of principles that it works on about who can access that data and what they can use it for. Now I've advocated for a participatory data trust and that means three things. Number one, that People whose data is being collected are on the data trust. So they're part of the independent data trust. Number two, we have a participatory process to actually understand what the principles for that data trust should be. And number three, and this is really blue sky thinking, is I think we should look at participatory budgeting as a way to actually have a cyclical political process to decide what's good, what's a good use of data. Now I've gone further than this, and this comes back to the patients like me example. I think we need a participatory digital trust where anyone who collects data, be it Facebook, City of Melbourne, Royal Melbourne Hospital, they also have to fund the tools that allow citizens to make use of that data. There's no use having open data if people don't have the tools to make use of the data. That's part of the power imbalance between Facebook and the average citizen that most privacy law seems to completely forget. So for me, I think if we're gonna have a data governance model, any set of funding mechanisms so people can make use of this data. Two questions I have though is how do we actually empower this conversation on data and what is a good use of data? If we look to the UK they've got a lot of examples of data trusts but what they see is that we just don't have a mature conversation in our society about what people can use data for. So that's something I'm interested in exploring and I'd love your ideas about collaborative projects. Keep the conversation going, send me an email, connect with me on Twitter. I love making connections and here's some references. The second one is a paper that I co-authored with Anne and some colleagues on these emerging data platforms and what they have to say about data governance. Thank you.